Very interesting. Like every initiative made by the government that uh, did not have a proper follow-up. Now the students are in school and, uh, by the way, they say the amount allocated in their um, structure comes without the ones that were supposed to be paid by the government. So that's the dilemma of the students and a good place to begin our discussion tonight because uh, Professor Kiyama is with me here. What a better person to talk about this. He basically sleeps, eats, does everything in university. Thank you so much, Prof, for coming tonight. And, and before you start, how controversial can, can annual leave be? What is this about your annual leave, Prof? <laughs> <laughs> how controversial can a single topic be? I, I was a place also that um, just taking uh, uh, some list could result to a lot of debate and everywhere. I, I, I think it is good to rest sometimes. Did you rest? I, I didn't rest as much as I would have hoped to because of that, what you have just uh, mentioned. Everybody calling me, why, why? You cannot go. The, 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 the graduation is around the corner. We are allowed to receive the first class of students. We are about to do this. You cannot, uh, you know. Be away from the institution. You cannot be away from the institution. <laughs> <laughs> you said you will apply for the renewal of your contract, have you? Y yes, I will. But uh, this term is heading in uh, 2025, okay. January 2025. So you still have some time. time. I still have a good time. I will apply when You have a good time. When time comes. <laughs> All right, let's get to the substance yes, of yes, this discussion. Yeah, yeah. And let's begin uh, with uh, the proposed model for yes. funding universities. Yes. You practice this. This is your daily life. Yes. Do you think from where you sit this was a brilliant idea? It, it was a brilliant idea. Because, you know, if we did not do what uh, was done, because this is just a way now that we are beginning now to think of how to finance university education. You know, until 1988, university education was being financed through just a budget. You say, what is your budget? You say, I need this to pay teachers, I need to pay this for technicians, I need to, to do, pay this for cleaning, I need to pay for this for electricity, I need to pay for... Then once you provide that budget, then the government says, okay, we will give you the whole amount or we will give you this. Yeah. Okay. But um, come... 2017-2018, the government said now we will finance using some agreed fees uh, for every program. If you are doing law, the fees is different from when you are doing dentistry. For example, if you are doing law, it will be like 140,000. And if you are doing uh, uh, dentistry, it will be like 700,000 because of the kind of the, the material required. Mm -hmm. So government said, Let's go to that, what we call differentiated unit cost. Differentiated based on the program. Okay. So, then, th th that's, they started doing it that way. But, although it was agreed that dentistry would be 700, from the first year of implementation, they were not, they were not, the government was not able to pay that amount. It paid about, uh, at an average, about 6% of what was agreed. Really? Really. After that, it moved. By the time we were saying now we need to change to rethink this model, it was just somewhere, just 45% uh, thereabout. So, who was to cover the balance? Who was to cover that cost? Okay. Who was to cover the, 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 the cost? The student. You cannot. You could not ask. Because the student have been told we are going to pay. So you can't go back to them to ask you for that money? You cannot go to them. They, they come to class, they come to class through dentistry. Yet you must produce uh, the same quality of student like before. So what did the universities do? The universities went to borrowing to ensure they maintain the quality. But for how long? It's like uh, you, 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 you say, like uh, for example, uh, you, you, you finance uh, hospitals uh, based on the, the number of patients they see, mm -hmm. or you say you are going to finance the judiciary based on the number of cases they handle. You know that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you handle less, you get less money. less money. But you need to be paid your salary. Because you at need to live. Day, yes. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. whether you dealt with fewer cases or more cases. Mm -hmm. So, 
this model agreed that one in principle that all fees must be paid okay now the issue that uh, we, we are having discussion on now which has taken this long is who should pay how much how much should the government should pay mm -hmm. how much should the household pay mm -hmm. how much should be in terms of loan etc okay. so that is the debate and it is an important debate okay the, because, because the other thing that it addressed very mm -hmm. quickly was the issue that the, 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 the other method that was used before was also bringing a little bit in inequality. Because when they were doing that budget thing, they had, we had come up with cut-off points. You know, remember the Joint Submission Board? Yes. Where we had moved to B+. Plus. If we move to B+, plus, as a minimum admission, because that is the only number of students you can finance, yeah. There are some counties, some regions, that uh, would not have somebody come to the university. Because they did not achieve the B plus. Because of the, the schools, the schools there. Yes. You get it. Not that the kids there are not as much, mm -hmm. but the equipping of the schools from where they come from. You know, before we had high schools, mm -hmm. the Form 6, where there was quite some, uh, some uh, investment to ensure they were almost the same quality. Yeah. Obviously, even then, we would talk about national schools, we talk about district schools. But all of them were uh, very fairly good schools. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is yeah. what happened. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm interested, before I delve deeper into mm -hmm. that, I'm also interested in the classification of students. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about it? Is it discriminatory? I mean, it's obvious they are vulnerable, yeah. extremely needy. They are needy, they are less needy. Mm. But what do you think of that classification in terms of when you want to finance the education mm. of these students to mm. classify them? The classification is, is just is, what you need to be understood is a principle. What is the basis of this? Okay. The basis of this is that uh, government is not able to pay 100% fees for every student. And that's where we started. There was a commitment that they will pay DUC, but they have not been able to pay. Okay. So what do you do? Do you now cross chop or what, else, what, what do you do? The best way is to say, for that parent, who can be able to support their child in the university, let them contribute something. Mm -hmm. For that parent where they ha who ha has a challenge, to pay for their child at the university, let the government contribute. That is the, that is the principle of this. So, and that's why you have now to go to classify. You look like, you see, there's, there are those who go, uh, you go to, to private uh, primary school. You know there is this kind of thing, yeah? Where you are going, you are, you are peponies and the other, you are paying quite substantial amount of money. A lot of money, yes, yeah. yeah. And after you do this, that will give you very good scores. Either you will go to another uh, private secondary school, mm -hmm. or you go to the alliance and mangoes of today. Because of the background, yes. it gives you. It gives you. Yeah. And immediately now you go to the university. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to the university, how does it come now? Mm -hmm. You, you the, government funding is, from the, the government, government is waiting for you to pay for you. For you, full funding. <laughs> and, and they know that you are just given a, a, a loan, mm -hmm. which another child who is very bright, but... They, they, they did not have enough money to take them to, to, to go to a private primary school. Mm -hmm. they, they, they followed a different lane. You get it, you, you see it's like a, a, a race you are doing. You, you are given a lane which you take you a little further. Yeah. And this one you short Straight up. It's straight up. Okay. And that is the one who is declared the winner. Mm -hmm. That brings in equality in the country. My problem yeah. is that yeah. when this new model was announced by the president, Prof, yeah. Yeah. it looks as though it was well thought about. Look at this new proposal where everyone mm. essentially mm. is going to pay something, however mm. little it mm. is. Mm. I mean, there must have been a reason for that classification. Mm. To come back and now ask even the students to chip in, whether it's 5%, 10%, 20%, mm. or 30%. Mm. I mean, it's not the original idea. Now, when you tell me mm. this was a good model, mm. where do you leave that aspect that they have to rethink it? Yes. Where did they fail in yeah. the, when they put it into practice? Yeah. The thought process. You know, I, I, I read the standard newspaper very early in the morning today. I always check the newspapers very early before six. You just know what was happening. And I was alarmed when I saw this. Mm -hmm. So I tried to inquire from those I thought know what is all this about. And nobody 
was able to, to, to say that this, what is the source of that information? Not that I know, because you, uh, I believe that uh, your newsmen did enough work, but w those I contacted, and I thought that they should be in the know, they, they did not have any information concerning that, uh, that, that, that issue that everybody must pay now. Yeah. Really? Yes. Even the breaking it down yeah. to the amount of yeah. money that they yeah. should be contributing. Yes, I didn't, I didn't know that. Because you know, when you are talking about, let's say, you are talking about, like you, you want to do medicine, yeah? If you say that someone will pay uh, 10%, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. it, it is quite uh, a substantial amount of money. Of yeah? that? Of that. Mm -hmm. You are talking almost about uh, 50, 70,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. So, so, some people cannot afford this, and yet you want to go to medicine based on the good brains you have, mm -hmm. not because on whether you have money or not, you don't have money. You get it? So, if that is the case, if this is true, the, what you put in the, in the, what was the news, what it was in the standard today, yes. then I believe there must have been another thinking about how do you support those parents, even after they are told they will pay, mm -hmm. maybe, some, some maybe CDF, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. the members of parliament will come in now and chip in, like they have been doing before. So, because with this model, it was agreed very clearly that if you have, you, it's clear you cannot pay, you should not be excluded from higher education. That is the principle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there should be always a method, there should be a way found to cover, even if it is said that it is you to contribute, there should be a way on how you can be supported to ensure that you do. Okay. You go to school. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, be, yeah. Before I get back yeah. to that again, yeah. there's this other thing. Now there are three categories. Mm. There is the help, yeah. which is a loan. Mm. Then there is sponsorship, mm. and then there are scholarships. Yes. Why that distinction? Because you know the help is for subsistence. Of the student. Yeah, for the student, for accommodation, mm -hmm. for food, mm -hmm. you know. Because you, you are coming from, it is not everybody who gets the help. You are coming from a, a, a background where you don't have enough money. Even when we, I myself, I went to the university, we got some money from help. The help money is loan. You pay it. You pay it back. You pay it back. I had to pay. Yes. Yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. But it helps you to be able to live a, a certain uh, minimum standard, all of you are students, yeah. So even if you come from a very poor background, now at least you have money to feed that you can have some clothing. Okay, when you are in the university. When you are in the university. Even when that child who comes from a rich family and you come from a poor family, you also be able to dress properly. And you cannot now distinguish here. Yeah. So that, that, that money just uh, try to bring people to that level. But you pay for that one. That one you pay later. Now, the other one is scholarship. Scholarship you don't pay. The, the, the other issue for loan for fees is the, the, is the first time it is being introduced. Okay. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So that if you choose that you want to go for a certain course and it is expensive and it's what you like and the government can only contribute to this, your household can contribute to this, the other one is given you to, to you as loan and you, so that you, you do the program you like. And then you pay it later. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. something uh, which is applies in, in many other countries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's just yeah. being adopted here. Yes. Yeah. And you're confident this is something that will work. Because increasingly, a lot of these two changes yeah. that are put in the education sector, mm -hmm. there's a lot of questions abound about yeah. them, Prof. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. The, base, the, the most important thing that this is a foundation now we are laying. Then after that, we must accept that we have to be ready to continually to continuously improve this. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. But the route we were following before was not sustainable. The universities were going to collapse. The public universities were just going to collapse. And some indeed, I think, collapsed. You're That's what I want me. to talk about. How <laughs> it's you are saying this. <laughs> we know of institutions that had a huge amount of a rare there's no way they were going especially after 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 the model two was done away with <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. their survival says so my mm. next question is yeah. prof we have dealt with student funding and the new student mm. now before i even go to my next question tell me when these students report to school right now mm. what do you tell them when they go to their fee structure and they still get the amount of money that they were supposed to pay 
in full less what they applied for what do you tell these students do you allow them in class you know we are here to get there because you know what uh, what happened is that uh, it was agreed that uh, the, the, those freshers, when they come, they are not going to be asked for any money for now mm -hmm. until this process is completed, the process that is going on now. When it is completed, each of them will, get, will be informed. You, you are doing this program, we are paying for you this much, we are giving you loan this much, uh, but you look for this much. Okay? So once you are told you look for that much, what do you mean, what do you, 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 you now, we will have to do now as universities, each university will have to come with a model how to engage the students mm -hmm. based on how much you are told you pay, how do you stagger that? How do you, okay. You get it. Mm -hmm. You have been told you have to pay 50,000. You have to pay 40,000. You have to pay that, that whatever amount now we have to agree, okay, why can't we say in the, the two, in the two semesters, so you pay the first semester this much, the second semester mm -hmm. this much. Okay. So that is the debate we will come into the minute they get their letters. So for they now, have not received. They have so not for received. now, for they, now they, they are, are allowed in the institutions. They are continuing with the classes. It's about a month plus since they joined. We continue to teach them. Okay. Yeah. There's no apprehension in school if this is not going to happen or not. No, there is no apprehension for now. We are teaching them. Okay. Yes, they, 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 it is only us now as uh, managers uh, of the universities who are now struggling. Okay, because we have them, we don't have the we don't have the, the resources as yet. Mm -hmm. But we have to ensure the quality is of the same quality like the previous class. Okay. It's not better. The yeah. disbursement question mm. to the universities yeah. because the universities have to survive. Yeah. How are you dealing with it? Because all these promises, money yeah. will be sent. Yeah. How are you managing as institutions? Yeah. Yes. You know, you, you have seen some, some universities are having problems to pay even salaries. It's real. Because what, what, what happened is that uh, we were given money for the continuing students. In totality, 100%? Yes, 100%. Okay. But not the full DUC, not the total cost. The total costs of, uh, I, I think, what were given about somewhere about 44, 40, 44, 40, 44 percent of the cost. Okay. Okay? But that is using the previous method where I indicated earlier, we never got 100 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, uh, that is a scenario. Now, we are hoping that when, the, when we get the extra, the funding now for first years, we will be able to recover. Yeah? And be able to cover some of the costs that we are struggling now to, to deal. We are still waiting for this simulation and we see how much it comes to. Yeah. What do we, what do we know? Uh, to, to a good level of certainty is that progressively uh, in two years, three years, four years, we will get much more than we were getting through the DUC. How do you know that, Prof? We, we know, like, I, we, we can give uh, the example, you say, like this. Mm -hmm. Like, for University of Nairobi, if I give the example for our yeah, university. From institution, yeah. yes. When we introduced DUC, uh, we were getting, like, about 4.5 uh, billion, yeah? Yes. Per year. Per year, annually. Annually. Mm -hmm. That uh, progressively because of the, the some various adjustments had gone to about 5.6 billion, yeah, by last year. Now, given the demands by the various universities, we were not expecting that to continue increasing that much, okay? But with this model where you are having 100% of the fees, that is what you know you have, yeah, everybody is paying it because this this amount works to as i said to only about 45 uh, percent of mm -hmm. the fees if you were to get the actual amount it would be almost double that yeah so now the assumption is that if we get full fees through scholarship household contribution then we will get we will get more yeah when you get the full portfolio of students 
not only one year alone when you get the from year one to year five mm -hmm. then you get you get the total amount because now what we get is at 45 percent okay uh, yes that's the highest so far you've gotten before when they started they started with the 66 percent i said but it's been coming down it has been coming down mm -hmm. uh to about 44 percent mm -hmm. yeah so that if because the numbers of students qualified to come to university will continue increasing it was projected that this if the government does not increase the basket mm -hmm. that this will continue to decrease to 40 percent that five percent like this but now we are talking about 100 percent again now, now we have begun now mm -hmm. from year one mm -hmm. with 100 percent not with the continuing students yeah from year one the joining students, the joining the students yes. yes with 100 mm percent -hmm. so you go to they go to second year you get another class 100 percent and like okay. that like that okay. with 100 percent mm -hmm. so in four years you have now collected what was going to become worse yeah and you see this happening bro i see it happening because if it doesn't happen yeah as a country we are in total danger because university education is a must a, a country must invest in university education yeah okay. if, we, if we don't do it mm -hmm. then then i don't know oh, as a people where we are headed to other countries will be moving and as we are moving this way okay it's a, <laughs> yes. it's a good vision yes. i am yeah. also interested in knowing mm. tonight prof mm. in terms of uh, alternative sources of income for universities i know there's an argument that there are institutions that don't have a way of raising extra monies if they are not fully funded through the students by the way so is there a way like the bigger institutions like the traditional institutions that we grew up mm -hmm. to know right is there a way that you from where you sit you think the higher learning institutions especially the universities can self-sustain without the government right now yes they they, they can um because even now it is not necessarily through the government they are surviving because you see the government pays fees for students mm -hmm. that's what i'm saying if there is any problem in the universities is as a result of government failing to pay fees it places students mm -hmm. in the university then pays 50 percent of the fees you get it mm -hmm. but so the universities are, 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 are the ones who which are, which are sustaining themselves. Because if government did not place them, many of those students will still come. Yes, through their own. Through their own means and pay their fees. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The problem now is they are placed mm -hmm. and whoever places them fails to pay fees. And he says, I will pay for them fees <laughs> anyway. I'll, you, I'll send you there. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm going to bring money yes, to yes, to go yes, to school. Yeah. when I don't send yeah. the money. So in, 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 in principle, universities are sustaining themselves. Mm -hmm. the, the question should be, can university survive only through fees? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which the it? answer is? <laughs> Which the answer is? Yeah. No. Okay. Okay? Because if you have to survive through fees, like you have seen uh, even some primary schools, uh, which, where the children get the best of whatever they need, mm -hmm. the fees is very high, mm -hmm. isn't it? So the problem is that if you charge uh, every student at cost, of the program then it can the fees can be very high okay yeah? and it can be it can be a big burden uh because like for places like us where you have to go after that even even us they see some bit of contribution by the public but student pays a lot which you pay in loans when you uh, you take as loan and pay when you when you graduate yeah? mm -hmm. so that alone is not possible so when you look at many universities they establish things and endowment funds yeah mm -hmm. uh which are supported by uh, philanthropists who want to 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 have an imprint in a certain university after you have excelled you say aha i want to support that university and they establish a share on a certain area and i put my money there when i uh for, for development of that institution. Others survive quite a lot, also from money given by alumni, those who graduated. Who are successful. Who are successful, mm -hmm. who are successful, yeah. So we have all those other kind of uh, other avenues through those kind of donations and endowments, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, and, I have a few minutes with you, Prof. And then the other okay. one, mm -hmm. the other one is obviously uh, trying to exploit the assets that you have to make money out of them. Yeah. Okay, mm. I have a few minutes mm. and I, I, I can't fail mm. to ask because I, I have seen this being asked. One, the quality, from where you sit, the quality of education in the country, mm. where you think it's headed if we are on track or the quality of education has been degraded and has gone down, that is a question that I, I'm being asked to ask you. Yes. Yes. That is the quality of university education? Yes, university, higher learning institution. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes that's, that's where it ends. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have done very well under the circumstances. You have done very well under the circumstances. And you know, if you take, for example, University of Nairobi, uh, all the, even within all the global rankings, mm -hmm. you find it is ranked very well, ranked very highly. Yeah. So, the, and the scholars who are teach, those who, who teach, are the best people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, even the, the only issue is that issue of financing, which must be collected. Okay. Because now, we have maintained that quality. Most universities have maintained that quality through borrowing money. So every university is owing. You know you can be looking uh, smart and you feed your family very well. So the quality and you take your children to the goods, but you have borrowed money to do that. So finally, mm -hmm. now you auctioned. You, you get it. So that is the risk. At least every, the quality was okay. Yeah. But then the loans are huge. Then after that, uh, those who, 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 who lent you the money just come and auction you off. That is the risk that is there. Okay. Uh, because the, the professors in the universities, because of the quality they were given, the quality of education they were given, they are not yet ready to lower the quality. Because maybe if we did that, after the money was reduced, you just ensure no practicals, you get it. You ensure... Um, and, uh, no field work. No field work. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You, you know, you cut your costs. <laughs> you to manage it. with what you have. To manage with what you have. Okay. And, but the, the professors, they are not uh, schooled exactly to do that kind of thing. So yeah. even them, they feel they are compromising. They, yeah, they, they, see, they, they don't compromise. Mm. They put pressure. No, no, no. These students must be go to the field. But there's no money for that. As a, as, a, as a vice chancellor, then you just have to borrow. What do you do now? Because they say, no, no, we cannot examine. We cannot examine the people we have not taught. What are you going to do? You yeah. must look for the money. You must look for the money. Where do you look for the money? You fail to pay uh, some other commitments. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You, you had the money maybe to go to pension or you had to... Uh, I, I, I was about to ask, do you go to the <laughs> bank to borrow this money? That's what, I, I, what kind of arrangement is this? That's what I was about to ask. Oh, so you have to compromise on other areas. You that, have to compromise. Unless important. Yes. Mm -hmm. not, they are also equally important mm -hmm. because you know pension is important. Yeah. But you would find that sometimes you say, okay. Let me not remit this. Let me not remit this and take the student to the field. Okay. But you see that is still waiting for you. So... Soon you find you have that having problem. There are those which also say uh, it's cooperative society. People say, "Oh, me, I'm putting ten thousand, five thousand to cooperative society." You put this, you you take students to the field to do their practicals. But when the person now goes mm -hmm. to take a loan to the cooperative, there is no money. Mm -hmm. You get so all those uh, gymnastics. But for how long? You do that. Okay. Yeah, for how long? Yeah, because the, the alternative really would have been there for the universities to say, oh, no, we don't have money. Let's close shop. Let's close shop and they shorten the semester. You get it? Mm. Uh, we, we, we reduce the number of classes. Uh, we, 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 we reduce the number of practicals, the field trips, you know, the, those kind of things. Mm. Yeah. But uh, the, 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 unfortunately, the professors are, uh, are, not, are not very good in that doing that kind of business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, they, they think, no, no, that one, that one is not for me. Mine is when two I teach the students the best I can. Yeah. Yeah. Final, second, mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. final question yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. The transition, the 100% transition from, high, uh, to, from primary to high school mm -hmm. has definitely affected the quality of education in high school, especially public. Then there's a lot of transition, especially lowering the entry grade mm. for the higher learning institution. Would you say that has compromised or we're still on course because there are more people coming in? I think it, what did you say? Lowering the high grade, lowering the, the grade. entry, the grade for entry to C plus. There's a time the cutoff point was B plus. Oh, you know, yeah. you know, uh, that had come about uh, because, you know, before we were admitting students based on the bed capacity. 
on bed capacity. You get it? We have 800, it has to be 800. It has to be 800. Okay. Then the, the, that's when, because the, the, it was limited, because of the, you have to new hostels and all this, there were very few universities, you remember those days? Yeah, about Kibake eight, yeah. <laughs> About six or so, or eight. Mm -hmm. Then Kibaki opened. Mm -hmm. But even then, the number of students who are sitting, uh, their KCSE was also increasing. Yeah. So, what did they do? They say, then it said, oh, let's take them also to public, to private universities. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But still, because the money was also not being increasing like this, what did they do now? It is to reduce the number of people passing. You remember, if you remember in 2015, there about, 2015, 165,000 students had C plus and above. Out of just about 600, mm -hmm. 620,000 who sat. Yeah. In 2018, only about, 2017, 2017, only about 70,000 got the C plus and above. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Out of those who sat, who were about almost 800,000. It, the number is increasing this way by the number you know that that uh, I have shared this uh, in, a, in a previous thing I thought that that was not correct was not reflecting the population mm -hmm. no and I don't even think it was right for intentionally make sure that very few people are coming to the higher learning institution because that was intentional it to was intentional to, 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 to sort out this uh, budget issue you see mm -hmm. because now the, this uh, the amount the, the government is not able to pay hundred percent, so maybe if they are less, mm -hmm. then then you'll be able maybe to to cover more a higher percentage. Okay. That was not a good method. Okay. The best thing mm -hmm. is to ensure as many as is possible number of students go mm -hmm. to the university. In fact, in many places, you find that that proportion is like fifty percent of a certain population, age twenty five to thirty five, or people who have gone to the university, fifty percent, sixty percent. But here. It's less than 10 percent okay. and we are competing with the, with the with the other countries okay yeah. before i let yeah. you go in a minute if you are not the vc of the university what would you would you go back to practice medicine i will go back to to class to teach <laughs> <laughs> okay let me rephrase it if you are not in class yes yes would you go back would you practice yes. perhaps you yes. still practice federal medicine yeah. yes i would go and start practicing yeah if I was not going back to class, to class yes. if I'm so if you're not a VC, you'll go back to class. I'll go back to class. If we lock you out of class, then I go and, and, and practice veterinary medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Your protection, I need to let you go. Yeah, I need to yeah. let you go. It's just to say that yeah. uh, this is the moment to rescue the university education in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We need to, whoever has the best idea, on what need to be done it must be done now we must support including postgraduate training in the universities now we are just talking about undergraduate students but those undergraduate students need to be taught by people who have done masters and phd we must invest in those ones as well okay we must invest in research because through research is where we get ideas or innovations that will expand the space of opportunities for the young people. Okay. Yeah. We have to invest in university. We have to invest in university education. Okay. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, Professor Stephen Gitai mm -hmm. Kiyama, for coming tonight. Uh, Thank sharing you. your perspective. I, I know this is a debate now that you say that you don't know where that information came from. This is a discussion that we'll still have. And my <laughs> colleague Shadrach Miti, I know, he will speak to you about that also. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Prof, for coming tonight to discuss the higher education funding. As I let him go, the other stories are making a headline. And uh, this is about the Nairobi Nakuru